Good morning, it's another tale from the Og Diaries. This one's called The Ogs Form a Band. And first of all, before I get into the story, um, the reason why I can't read it differently is because I'm not clever enough to know how to edit anything. So I'm just using um, my best limited abilities um, to to do all these videos. That's why they're so blimmin' primitive. But anyway, Sage, you having to look at me. Um, I'm in my studio today because I wanted to do some um, other things for this particular story because it involves a few props, um, which I wanted to make sure you um, you got ready in case you want to re reread it through yourselves. Um, with your, it's a particularly good story for parents with younger children who just want to have a bit of fun making some silly noises. Um, and using some of the odd bits and bobs around the house, such as an ice cream carton, a washing up um, container. Where is it? I can't even see it. Um, yeah, um, so the reason why I've got these, we need to make some different sounds. So one of the sounds is a thump, thump, thump on the top of a, an old soup um, container. And we've got an ice cream container filled with water. It make more sense when I start to read the story, but I wanted to make sure you, you um, were aware that this story comes with some extra sounds, which I won't be able to do through the story other than verbally. Um, so we have another noise as well. We had so hitting with a bit of an old stick, brush, tap, tap, and um, I picked up some stones out from the garden because you want to do some. Can you hear that crunch, crunch, crunch sounds? Um, so again, very, very basic, simple activities that I hope when I read the story to you, um, you will realise how they add an extra dimension. What does that make it? A 4D story. Um, Okay, so the Oxwama Band. Uh, I just wanted to do a little run through uh, because each one of my books has required um, some fantastic support and help from other people um, that I've had the good fortune of working with um, very voluntarily, informally. I normally pay most people um, for work that we do with paintings and in kind. We all sort of work that way in the creative industries. Um, but that, a special thanks to um, Anne Lennis, um, a fantastic graphic designer who put together the book for me. Um, and this one is my main copy, my sort of, I don't know what the, the official name is for the, the original. Um, from this, I've made little books, which I then have up in the craft shop and uh, that are easier. Um, they, they sort of follow a different format. But this is my big, my big copy, my, my formal copy. Um, the actual characters that are involved in this one um, are some familiar faces, I hope. Graham, Tom, Eleanor, Clarice, Aggie, Sylvie and Kenneth. You've seen them all before if you've watched some of the other um, videos. And uh, I want to draw attention to, um, I just go to one picture, for example, in there, um, the photography. This time, the, the lady I worked with, um, and like last time it was a gentleman, Alan Mason-Jones, the photography here is done by um, Mandy Thomas, a locally, local photographer. Uh, and uh, oh, her patience was incredible. Um, she could see, she, it was very different to what she was normally doing with beautiful portraits and um, uh, family photos, etc. But I soon managed to get her imagination into the world of Oggs and um, her new family portrait, in effect. Um, and she she really did um, put enormous effort into creating some really fun, um, real, re real scenes with the Oggs on the beach. So these were all put up in situ. And uh, and yeah, thank you, Mandy. Um, like I say, that's Anne with the graphics, Mandy with the um, photography, and another important person that helped me put the uh, a lot of the books, the, well, the early books. That actually, the significance of this person I'm going to mention, Harriet Hopkins. Um, she edited this one, but um, she really helped me um, believe in them and and think, oh, these are great. These are so accessible for children, etc. So sometimes having somebody like that that really does like. Um, uh, make you realize no you're not going mad this isn't you losing your mind um playing with toys on the beach this is this is a really useful set of tools and harriet works in um uh, sort of uh, in the sector where she works a lot with children adults encouraging reading she's um uh, a, a really good writer etc so um it was really nice having someone like that with that sort of experience and understanding of the process um almost endorsing it so thank you harriet as well Okay, right, I'm going to turn over. Like I said, I won't be able to act out for the sounds because I've got one hand holding this and another hand turning pages. And it takes an awful lot of concentration <laughs> to read um, read all the words. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here we go. I'll come down here. Off we go. Sylvie and Eleanor are searching for treasure. Oh, look, says Sylvie. She has found a plastic bottle shining in the sun. 
Do you think this will be useful? she asks. Oh, yes, says Eleanor. We could use it to collect seawater. Sylvie looks at the bottle shining brightly on the sand. I've got another idea, she says. She fills the bottle with pebbles and shakes it. Shh, 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 goes the bottle. Look, Eleanor, I've made a maraca, says Sylvie excitedly. Hmm, can I make an instrument too, asks Eleanor. Sylvie points at a tin. You can make a drum, she shouts. Eleanor grabs the tin and begins to hit it with her hands. Thump, 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 goes the tin. Sylvie picks up some driftwood and hands it to Eleanor. Eleanor makes a new sound. Rat-a-tat-tat, rat-a-tat-tat. I've made two sounds, says Eleanor excitedly. Sylvie shakes the maraca and Eleanor beats the drum. I wonder if I can make two sounds, says Sylvie. I know, try tipping some of the pebbles into the rock pool, says Eleanor. Sylvie runs off to the rock pool and tips some of the pool pebbles into the water. Splash, 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 go the pebbles. I have two sounds now as well, shouts Sylvie, jumping up and down excitedly. Well done, Sylvie, says Eleanor. Tom pokes his head out of his teepee. What is all that noise, he asks. I was sleeping. Sorry, Tom, we didn't mean to wake you. We made some musical instruments and sounds. Do you want to have a go? asks Eleanor. Tom shakes his head. No, thank you, Eleanor. I am not very musical. I have no rhythm, he says, shrugging. Watch us. All I am doing is thump, thump, thumping and rat-a-tat-tatting, says Eleanor. And all I'm doing is shush, shush, shushing and splish, splash, sploshing. Go on, have a go, Tom, says Sylvie. Tom joins in with the shakes and the thumps. Sylvie and Eleanor shriek with joy. Your instruments have lovely sounds, but I couldn't make a sound of my own, says Tom, crunching away in the sand, looking sad. Listen, shouts Sylvie. Tom, keep walking. Tom keeps walking. Crunch, 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 goes Tom. That's a lovely sound, Tom, says Eleanor and Sylvie. Tom walks around happily. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Thump, thump, thump. Rat-a-tat-tat, beats Eleanor. Shh, shh, shh. Splish, splash, splosh, goes Sylvie. Aggie and Clarice have been watching and listening from their own teepee. Whoa, Ox, it sounds like you're having lots of fun, says Aggie. We are, sing Tom, Sylvie and Eleanor. Can we join in, calls Clarice. Of course, says Sylvie. Maybe you could find some new sounds to make. Aggie has an idea. She runs off into the teepee and comes back holding two glass bottles. One is empty, the other is half full of water. She passes one to Clarice and takes a great big breath in through her mouth and blows it out over the top of the empty bottle. <laughs> Whistles the bottle. What a lovely noise, says Clarice. Now you try yours, says Aggie. Clarice takes a great big breath in through her mouth too and blows out over the top of the half full bottle. <laughs> whistles the bottle. Clarice and Aggie do a happy jig. Those are very good noises, ladies, says Tom, as he crunch, crunch, crunches in the sand. Let's do all our noises together, su suggests Eleanor. Thump, thump, thump. Rat-a-tat-tat, -tat, beats Eleanor. <gasps> Goes Aggie. <laughs> shh, shh, shh. Splish, splash, splosh. Goes Sylvie. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Goes Tom. <laughs> Goes Clarice. Graham and Kenneth hear all the different sounds and come to investigate. Whoa, those noises you're making are really cool, says Graham. Yes, says Kenneth, it sounds like music. What can we do to join in, asks Graham. You could put words to the sounds, suggests Kenneth. You're very good with words. Oh yes, that's a great idea, shout the other Ogs. What will you do, Kenneth, asks Graham. I'm going to conduct, Kenneth says proudly, puffing out his chest. What does that mean? asks the Ogs. It means, says Kenneth, that I am in charge of when you make your sounds so we can turn them into a song. Oh, yes, let's make a song, cried the Ogs. OK, Ogs, if I point to you, that means I want you to play your instrument. Then Graham can add in the words. Ready, Ogs? Let's go. Kenneth stands tall and begins to conduct the Ogs. Ooh. 
<laughs> the wind is howling. Shh, shh, say the leaves on the trees. Splish, splash, splash, says the rain as it falls. Thump, thump, rat a tat tat, roars the angry sky. Crunch, 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 go the ogs as they run and hide, says Graham. All the ogs jump up and down with excitement. We have made a band. We have instruments, sounds, a song and a conductor. Well done, ogs. The end. <laughs>